Hello, my name is Nick Markham. I am a junior. I will be reciting The Hospital Window by James L. Dickey. I have just come down from my father. Higher and higher he lies above me in a blue light shed by a tinted window. I drop through six white floors and then step out onto pavement. Still feeling my father ascend, I start to cross the firm street, my shoulder blade shining with all the glass the huge building can raise. Now I must turn round and face it, and know his one pain from the others. Each window possesses the sun, as though it burned there on a wick. I wave like a man catching fire. All the deep-dyed window panes flash, and behind them, all the white rooms, they turn to the color of heaven. Ceremoniously, gravely, and weakly, dozens of pale hands are waving back from inside their flames. Yet one pure pain among these is the bright, erased blankness of nothing. I know that my father is there, in the shape of his death still living. The traffic increases around me, like a madness called down on my head. The horns blasted me like shotguns, and drivers lean out, driven crazy. But now my propped up father lifts his arm out of stillness at last. The light from the window strikes me and I turn as blue as a soul, as the moment when I was born. I am not afraid for my father. Look, he is grinning. He is not afraid for my life, either, as the wild engines stand at my knees, shredding their gears and roaring, and I hold each car in its place for miles, inciting its horn to blow down the walls of the world that the dying may float without fear in the bold blue gaze of my father. Slowly I move to the sidewalk, my pin-tingling hand half dead at the end of my bloodless arm. I carry it off in amazement, high, still higher, still waving, my recognized face fully mortal, yet not, not at all, in the pale, drained, otherworldly, stricken, created hue of stained glass. I have just come down from my father. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ross Brunetti. I am a sophomore, and I will be reciting Memory as a Hearing Aid by Tony Hoagland. Somewhere, someone is asking a question, and I stand squinting at the classroom, with one hand cupped behind my ear, trying to figure out where that voice is coming from. I might be already an old man, attempting to recall the night his hearing got misplaced. Front row center at a battle of the bands where a bunch of leather-clad, second-rate musicians amped up to dinosaur proportions, test drove their equipment through our ears. Each time, the drummer threw a tantrum. The guitarist whirled and sprayed us with machine gun riffs as if they wished that they could knock us quite literally dead. We called that fun in 1970, when we weren't sure our lives were worth surviving. I'm here to tell you that they were, and many of us did, despite ourselves. Though the road from there to here is paved with dead brain cells, parents shocked to silence, and squad cars painting the whole neighborhood the quaking tint and texture of red jelly. Friends, we should have postmarks on our foreheads to show where we have been. We should have pointed ears or polka-dotted skin to show what we were thinking when we hot-rotted over God's front lawn and death kept blinking. But here I stand, an average-looking man, 
staring at a classroom where someone blonde in braids with a beautiful belief in answers is still asking questions. Through the silence in my dead ear, I can almost hear the future whisper to the past. It says, this is not a test, and everybody passes. Thank you. By Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Between the dark and the daylight, when the night is beginning to lower, comes a pause in the day's occupation. That is known as the children's hour. I hear in the chamber above me the patter of little feet, the sound of a door that is opened, and voices soft and sweet. From my study, I see in the lamplight, descending the broad hall stair, Grey Alice and Laughing Allegra, and Edith with golden hair, a whisper, and then a silence. Yet I know by their merry eyes they are plotting and planning together to take me by surprise. A sudden rush from the stairway, a sudden raid from the hall. By three doors left unguarded, they enter my castle wall. They climb up into my turret, over the arms and back of my chair. If I try to escape, they surround me. They seem to be everywhere. They almost devour me with kisses, their arms about me entwine, till I think of the Bishop of Bingen in his mouse tower on the Rhine. Do you think, O oh blue eye Bantity, because you have scaled the walls? <laughs> such, an old, such an old mustache as I am is not a match for you all. I have you fast in my fortress and will not let you depart, but put you down into the dungeon in the round tower of my heart. There will I keep you forever. Yes, forever and a day, till the walls shall crumble to ruin and molder in dust away. Thank you.